So H5N1 has been in the headlines since earlier this summer when our Michigan Department of Health began detecting it in various wastewater sampling, as well as in several Michigan herds of cattle and poultry that we use in our agriculture within our state. It is technically flu A, although the letters are different, as you said. So rather than you know H1N1, it is H5N1. And so um, it's in the news because it's been going through the various animal populations in Michigan. And there have been people who have been exposed to these animals in Michigan who have become infected. And what would symptoms look like for people who may have been infected with this bird flu? Well, it's important to know that the vast majority of people who have contracted bird flu in the recent two years have been very minimally ill. The most common symptom has actually been red eyes, something called conjunctivitis, so itchy, watery eyes. People also have exhibited things such as sore throat, runny nose, fever, and cough. It's important to note that of the human infections we have seen in recent time, very few people have become severely ill. And in fact, although there have been 67 cases in um, the United States recently, only two of those people were ill, and um, one in Canada and one in Louisiana. So the vast majority of people have been fine, but they should be aware that if they have chickens in their backyard and they're exhibiting signs of the flu, they need to let us know. And how concerned should people be about the bird flu right now? I think right now there is still a low level of concern. We do know that recently there are some people in Oakland County who were exposed to it through their chickens who were ill. And two of them are currently exhibiting some mild symptoms of the flu. They're currently undergoing testing to see if they have the H5N1 avian flu or if they have the regular flu or something else going around this winter. Um, so far, we do know that that's in the process. Right now, the biggest thing that will keep our communities safe is close monitoring from scientists to make sure that one, this is not spreading person to person the way COVID did, and two, that we really get more data on just how virulent or dangerous it is. Those are the two drivers that will allow us to know how worried we should be about H5N1. And then when it comes to, if you have the symptoms of bird flu, what should people do next? Well, it's important for people to know and doctors in the community to know that if someone has H5N1 bird flu, their flu test that you take in their nose will be positive for influenza A, the same as any other regular influenza patient. And so if the person doesn't tell you, hey, I work on a cattle farm or, hey, I have my own chickens, you wouldn't necessarily know to do the extra step to send that sample to Lansing to have it evaluated for H5N1. So I want I want to encourage all the Michiganders and all the doctors here, um, and as well as all the providers in urgent cares, if someone is coming with influenza symptoms and you find out that they have flu A, please make sure you're asking them, hey, do you have chickens or hey, do you have you know animals that you've been around? Because we might be able to make sure we get more data at the state level if we can find it other places. And er are there any things that people can avoid doing to heighten or increase their chance of catching the bird flu? I know I read something about, you know, not drinking raw milk or also being careful when you are interacting with the birds, chickens and things like that. Absolutely. Well, you know, backyard flocks are are popular and a lot of people love the idea of knowing where their food comes from and where their eggs come from what i would say is that you know if you're someone who does not have a backyard flock um don't go visiting your friends right now okay that do have those um people who might be out and about walking um, and encountering a dead bird or a dead animal um don't touch the animal make sure you stay away from it it's, even if you think it's sick or hurt it's best not to touch it right now um, people should be aware that they should be avoiding drinking any raw milk where we have detected virus, uh, as well as avoiding the consumption of unpasteurized meats and cheeses. Uh, and then, you know, lastly, I really do think people should be encouraged to mask. 
We do know that with large droplet respiratory viruses like flu and like RSV, masking is highly effective in stopping them from spreading. So we want to be masking and washing our hands and doing all the things we should be doing this winter with cases of RSV and flu and strep throat and norovirus and everything else that we tend to get sick with this time of year.